Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now we have with us our first guest and only guest actually in the studio. She's an author, an 11 year old author who has won several awards. Now she's won several awards, including two medals in the tennis summer tournament at VGC Lagos. And she has also served as a head girl in Grand Oak Bridge Montessori School and starred in the first kids apprentice show in Nigeria. Her name is Munachi Mbonu and she's a multi-talented writer. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. You for are a me. star. Thank you. You know, as I heard that you were coming on the show, I was just thinking, Leila, what were you doing when you were 11 years old? I know. Old? <laughs> and when I think back at it, I was not doing anything close to what you're doing. So I know that you are a star. And for everybody watching right now, they are watching a future star sitting on Hello Nigeria. Yes. It is such a pleasure to have oh, you here. Thank you for having me here. Thank, oh, you. thank you. So let's, let's get to know Munachi Mbono a lot closer, all right? Mm -hmm. Tell us, when did you develop the flair for reading? Well, I started writing at the age of seven. I really liked reading a lot of books, not the, the simple books like novels. Like any time my, where my cousins and my brothers are playing, I'm the only one sitting in my room reading books. Then I used to have a laptop where I go sketch, add an app where I go sketch, then under my sketches, I write short stories behind it. Amazing. So you like arts as well? Yes. Oh, that's amazing. So tell us a bit about the book Concealed. First things first, I am definitely going to read it this week, but I want you to give us an insight into the book. Okay, so Concealed is rivalry between two girls, Wami and Ifedaya. There's a lot of high school drama, but at the end they become more than friends, so find out. Really? Hey. That's actually exciting. Oh my exciting. god! <laughs> yes. So, is it something you wrote from a, pers a place of personal experience, or did you just imagine the story? Well, it's from most of the TV shows and my friend's drama. So, like, it's just a drama field book. Aww. So, I want young girls to know that wherever you're coming from, you you have to learn to love and appreciate one another. You don't get anything by being in a clique or being queen bee. So you don't have a click? No. Really? But that's good though. High yeah. five from across the room. I never had a click while I was in school as well. But I want, to, I want to know how you actually managed to balance writing this book with school at the same time. Did you find it hard? Yeah, it was very hard because I was in grade six when I wrote Concealed. Grade six, we had a lot of homework. We came back later. So... In the weekends, I had to cancel my playtime and focus and write my book till whenever I want to stop. So where I write my book best, I go to my room, make sure there's peace, everywhere's quiet. Then I bring out my laptop when I'm done with my homework and I type. When your parents first discovered that you could write, how was their reaction and how, how much support did you get from them? When my mom read the book, she was like, wow, Mona, you have to publish this book. I've, re I've written a lot of books, but some of the manuscripts, I, could, I can't find it. So my mom wanted to publish this one and Chidabim, The Child of Destiny, the second book I wrote. So she pushed a lot. She made time for my book. She, well, she was very wonderful. The world's most supportive mom. Yes. That's amazing. That's amazing. It's so good for you to have support around you. And how long did it take you to write it? This year for two and a half, two months. What? So for those of us who have been saying we want to write books and haven't gotten around to writing this book for over a year, shame on us. Because an 11-year-old girl wrote a book in two months. Should I tell you why that's so shocking to me? I'm currently writing a book, and I've been going back and forth on it for the past six months. You I've been writing the book <laughs> in my head. I haven't gotten around to penning it down. But Munachi, because I have met you, I would open up my laptop, uh -huh. and I would start to write again. Wow. So let's talk about you at home. When you get, Do you have sisters? Do you have siblings? Yes, yeah, so I have two brothers. Nice. So what position in the family are you? I'm the first. <gasps> yes, yeah, so I have to do a lot of sacrifice. Exactly. Okay, tell Give us, us a bit about that. that. <laughs> like, we're three in the family. When there are only two snacks or two goodies, I have to 
give my younger brothers Aww. those ones. Or there are only two tickets for rides in carnivals. Like when we travel to London, um, only two people could skate that hour, so I had to give them to my brothers. You see why I want to have a girl first and two boys thereafter? Munachi has given me another reason to have a conversation with God again. <laughs> oh, well, that's amazing. So what do you see for yourself? Do you want to be a world-renowned author? What other plans do you have for your life? Well, I want to encourage young children to read because I see a lot of children, their, mom, their parents are always forcing them to read. They just dump their books and go on their iPads and their phones. Yeah. So I want our generation and the next to find a culture of reading. Well, how did you develop a culture of reading? Was it something that just came naturally to you? Or did your mom have a role to play in it as well? Yes, sometimes when I was young, when the house was noisy or we were watching TV all day, she wants us to engage in an activity. Instead of just watching TV all day till we go and sleep, she'll tell us to go and read a book and do a book review on it. Or she'll tell us to create a to write what our business will be about. Your mom did all that? Yes. No, me, I, I used to do business plans so with my mom. It's very yeah. good. It's good yeah. skills to actually develop and good skills for you to yeah. have. So, aside from being an author, what else are you passionate about? I want to be a surgeon. I like science. Really? Yes. When, so when you grow up, you want to officially be a surgeon? Yes, but I'll still be writing. Of course, you can be anything you want to be. You can be as many things as you want to be. Don't let anybody allow you to box yourself into a cage. Spread your wings and fly. So let's talk about Munachi and the things she likes. Let's get to know you a little personally. Okay. Mm? What's your favorite subject? Math. What's your favorite food? <laughs> I don't uh, like math. That's why I had that face on. <laughs> Um, I like pounded yam and oha soup. You're a good girl. girl. You're a very good girl. So what's your favorite color? <laughs> I like teal. Hmm. Like, like ocean blue, that kind of color. So for those who don't know, teal is the color for cervical cancer awareness. And if you want to be like Munachi and like Teal, maybe you should follow at Imac Cervical Cancer Awareness on Instagram. And anything you post that is still colored, they would repost it in a bead to create awareness for cervical cancer because that is one cancer that can be prevented if detected on time. So you actually like a really good color. Yeah. Muna, I'm going to ask you something, okay? Don't see it as a difficult question. I want you to give your honest opinion. What do you think about everything going on in Nigeria? How does it make you feel? You're still very young. Yeah, makes me feel kind of worried, like how will our future generation be like? Like, will it be a good future? Would it be the worst future to imagine? I want everyone to build on their talents so I will have a greater future. If you noticed, some shops have, robots are taking over the world, if you've noticed. Mm -hmm. Some shops have self-service. So in the future, there will be little or no need of employment. Many people will be jobless. So for us not to have that kind of future, we should develop on our talent and create a better future that we'll enjoy. If you had the opportunity to sit down with the president of Nigeria, <laughs> what would you say to him? I'll say, I'll tell him exactly what I said. That's Brilliant. really good though. That's <laughs> really good. So. With writing your book and everything, like you said, you had to give up a lot of time on your weekends and miss out on seeing your friends and all of that. Are you able to balance that now? Yeah, since I'm like done with the book, the publishers are printing and publishing the book. So I have time to have a little fun. So in writing the book, how many chapters does the book have? Or I think nine. Yes, which nine. was your favorite chapter to write? Uh, since I'm the author, I can't really say. <laughs> but when you read the book, you can pick your favorite chapter. Was there any statement in the book that as you wrote it, you were like, yes, Muna, you're the queen? <laughs> yeah, many. There are many statements. Can you, remind, can you reenact one or quote one for us? Um, from Chidubim, The Child of Destiny. 
at dinner, this is one of the funny parts, at dinner in his uncle's house, they served pizza. He, because he was a village boy, he didn't understand what was pizza. And then when they brought it out in the carton, he was wondering why they didn't put it in the plate and serve it well, it was just there. <laughs> then when he took a bite, it, he tasted it all cooked. The pepperoni was not peppery, it was just salty. It, this tomato sauce was just covering everything and making it so disgusting. He nearly threw up the food. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Because you know? he's used to the abacha mm -hmm. and eban soup that he eats at dinner, but not pizza. He has mm. never heard You know, of it. it's so funny. Something yeah. like that happened when I was in school. They served lasagna at lunch, and someone was like, What's this? Is it bread and stew? <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> All right, so let's get to know what other fun things you do, Munechi. When you're not writing, what are you doing? The way you've been placing your leg, are you a ballet dancer? <laughs> yes, I dance ballet. Ooh, so what other <laughs> things do you do for fun? I play lawn tennis. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. amazing. And yeah. if there's one thing, one skill you wish you could learn, or something you'd like to try out, <laughs> what would it be? Mm. Maybe an instrument or a language? Yes. Like, I play the violin, it's, I see professional vi violinists playing like boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And their fingers on the fingerboard. I just wish to play the violin as you much can. as them. You yeah, can. Yeah, but I'm trying my best. And now you're starting secondary school. Yes. You know, you can always take up a co-curricular subject and try yeah. it out and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Who would you say is your favorite <laughs> author in the world? Well, I like... Rachel Rennie Russell, an American writer. Then I like Chimamanda Adichie. Amazing. Have you read her books? Yeah, I've read one of her books, I think. Purple Hibiscus. Remind me, after the show, mm. I'm going to get your details. I'm going to give you a free copy of another one of Chimamanda's books. Okay? Oh, thank you. All right, so now you're, you're a big girl, but mm. you're gradually becoming a teenager. Mm. And usually there's, this, there's some challenges that girls experience, you know, when transitioning from being a girl into a teenager. Yes, like my mom your, has told me. Your mom has told you. Yeah, it's very scary thinking about it, but... <laughs> what are you scared of? Well, the <laughs> transitioning. Okay. My cousin, that's old, she's a teenager now. Well, she's turning 13 this November. She has experienced that. And you're a bit scared. So there's nothing to be scared about, okay? Yeah, she told me that. We've passed through that place, that phase, that we did not die, and we didn't turn out badly as well. And so that's why we also have mothers. Exactly. So your mom is an angel, and I yeah. love the relationship that you have with your mom. How close are you to your mom? Well, very close. Like, if she travels for a week, it feels like a year. Oh. <laughs> How oh, sweet. Aww. Okay, so when she, I, I know there, there, there's some of the issues. You, you've talked about you know the sweet parts let's find out the challenges did you have did you experience any challenges growing up did you have any challenges writing your book at the time you've been down let's let's find out the not so nice yes parts. i felt like giving up like i just i was so tired writing those books because when i started writing i didn't really there's this feeling that when you start writing you don't really want to finish you become reluctant to it but my mom told me the advantages of writing the book and she encouraged me to finish it. That's really good. You needed that motivation to get through and you did it in two and a half months. That's like yes. no time at all. Do you plan on writing any more books this year? Yes. Like when I'm going to secondary school, I'll, I'll, I'll write more books. How prepared are you for boys? <laughs> Boys. Boys. I'm sure mommy has had a conversation of boys <coughs> with you. Well, I'm not thinking about that now. Good. Yeah, I'm not really disturbed with that. But, well, when, I'm, when I get older. Brilliant. That, that, there's time for all that. But thank yeah. you so much for joining us, Monachi. Thank you so thank much. You and so we wish much. you all the best with your career. We hope thank that you, you blossom and you shine. And you fly like the you know the superstar that you are. Yeah, thank you. All right, we will find out more information with regards to Monachi and Bonu, how you can get her books. How can people get your books yet? Do you know? Yes, you could. Okay. That it's a soon be on Amazon. All right. So you could order. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for joining us.
to enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page.